Here is another gross picture of a uterus in which you could see the muscular wall has been cut. And in areas, the endometrium may look like it's fairly uniform, which is a good sign. But in other areas, you can see an irregular hemorrhagic thickening of the internal wall here and here, which got to be very suspicious for something funny going on. In addition, within the myometrium, you can see these fairly well-defined whitish rubbery nodules here and here and here and here and maybe even a sub one here, so classical for benign leiomyomas. Let's take a look at the uh, slice through an area like this. And um, you could see uh, we weren't lucky enough to get through one of the leiomyomas, but we do see endometrium. Uh, we do see something else within this lumen. And we can see a little bit of uh, smooth muscle of the myometrium here as well. Here's classical, normal, textbook, boring, smooth muscle myometrium. Here's an area which at first might look like a little thin or atrophy of the endometrium. But uh, here's an area where the endometrium looks uh, thicker. And uh, when you go up closer, you can see that not only do the glands look thicker, but they look downright nasty as well. Here's a mitosis. These are all generally hyperchromatic cells. Uh, this is more than just hyperplasia. You may want to call this cancer or at least atypical hyperplasia. But while you're sitting there on your little throne deciding what you want to call it today, please notice that you don't want to get lost in the forest for lack of looking at the trees. Because this big thing filling up the lumen is the real area in question. And there is no air, uh, doubt whatsoever that this is an adenocarcinoma dark, irregular uh, glands, some of which have this little fibrovascular stalk here. So if you want to describe this as papillary to a certain degree, you could. But in addition, you can see that there's also areas that look like they're necrotic in the center and may be filled with neutrophils. Uh, you can see a little papillary structure here and generally out here with secondary papillary branches. And you can also see, once again, we'll take another little look, as high as we can, that these cells have no general orientation of the nucleus towards the base. They're dark. They're bigger than they should be. They're lumpy. They're irregular. And if we want to travel around the little roads here, we probably won't have a hard time finding increased and possibly even atypical or multipolar mitotic figures. There's a mitotic figure. Maybe that's one, but it's kind of near the surface and necrotic, so I wouldn't bet my life on it. There's a couple scattered inflammatory cells out here. This could very easily be an abnormal mitosis. I'm not too sure. Um, maybe I could look around a little bit more and find a uh, there's a big, dark, ugly cell. That's either a mitosis or an area of necrosis within a glandular lumen. And here's a mitotic figure. And for all practical purposes, if there was any doubt that this was a malignancy, uh, please notice the fact that when we were looking at it grossly, it looked like it may have been uh, infiltrating the uh, myometrium perhaps and in here there is no direct evidence that this large tumor is directly invading the myometrium but there is direct evidence that the same malignant features that you're seeing here you're seeing in the underlying uh, endometrium as well so guilt by association this is cancer Although this may appear atrophic at first, this is very atypical or cancer. And by all uh, common uh, definitions, this probably is too. So let's beat this horse a little bit more. And now that we're pretty sure this is cancer, you might want to debate whether this uh, little gland here is invading the uh, myometrial bundles. 
or whether it's just uh, next to it. Quite frankly, it probably doesn't matter. Thank you very much.